So today we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, Chapter 16, entitled King Chichiketu Meets the Lord. So it's uh, 53 and 54 together. What's on the board there? 54? Okay, so that's the second one. Then I'll just say the first one myself. Yata Sushupta Purusho Vich. This is the first one. <laughs> Yata Sushupta Purusho Vishvam Pashyati Chatmani Atmana Mekadesha Stam Manyate Swapna Uttitaha. So now we'll do the second one. Evam Jagaranada. Sorry. Evam Jagaranadini. Jiva Stanani Chatmanaha. Maya Matrani Vigyaya Tatra Staram Param Smaret Evam Jagaranadini Jiva Stanani Chatmanaha Maya Matrani Vigyaya Tadra Staram Param Smarit Evam Jagaranadini Jiva Stanani Chatmanaha Maya Matrani Vigyaya Tadra Staram Param Smarit Devotees. Yata, Yata. Just, as. just as Sushuptaha, Sushuptaha. Sleeping. sleeping, Purushaha, Purushaha. <coughs> a person, person. Vishvam. Vishvam, the whole universe, the whole universe. Pashyati. Pashyati, perceives, perceives. Cha. Cha, also, also. Atmani. Atmani, in himself, in himself. Atmanam. Atmanam, himself. Ekadeshastam, lying down in one place. Manyate, he considers. Swapne, in the dreaming condition. Utitaha, 
waking up, waking up. evam, evam. In, this in this way, jagarana adini, the states of wakefulness and so on, so jivastanani, the living entities' different conditions of existence. Cha, Cha. Also. also, Atmanaha, Atmanaha. of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Godhead. Maya Matrani, the exhibitions of the illusory potency, Vigyaya, Vigyaya. Knowing. knowing, Tat, Tat. of them, them. Drastaram. The creator or seer of all such conditions. Param, the supreme. Smaret, one should always remember. Translation by Sh Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. When a person is in a deep sleep, he dreams and sees in himself many other objects such as great mountains and rivers, or perhaps even the entire universe, although they are far away. Sometimes, when one awakens from a dream, he sees that he is in a human form, lying in his bed in one place. Then he sees himself, in terms of various conditions, as belonging to a particular nationality, family, and so on. All the conditions of deep sleep, dreaming, and wakefulness are but energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should always remember the original creator of these conditions, the Supreme Lord, who is unaffected by them. Please repeat. When a person is in deep sleep, he dreams and sees in himself many other objects, such as great mountains and rivers, or perhaps even the entire universe, although they are far away. Sometimes when one awakens from a dream, he sees that he is in a human form, lying in his bed, in one place. Then he sees himself in terms of various condition, conditions as belonging to a particular nationality, family, family. And, so and so on. All the conditions of deep sleep, of deep sleep. Dreaming, dreaming, and wakefulness, and wakefulness. Are, but are but energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Of Personality of Godhead. One should always remember, should always remember the, original the original creator of these conditions, of these conditions. The, Supreme Lord, the Supreme Lord, who is unaffected by them. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. None of, the, none of these conditions of the living entities, namely deep sleep, dreaming, and wakefulness, is substantial. They are simply displays of various phases of conditional life. There may be many mountains, rivers, trees, bees, tigers, and snakes that are situated far away, but in a dream one may imagine them to be nearby. Similarly, as one has subtle dreams at night, when the living entity is awake, he lives in gross dreams of nation, community, society, possessions, skyscrapers, bank balance, position, and honor. Under the circumstances, one should know that his position is due to his contact with the material world. One is situated in different positions in various forms of life that are but creations of the illusory energy, which works under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the Supreme Lord is the ultimate actor, and the conditioned living entity should simply remember this original actor, Sri Krishna. As living entities, we are being carried away by the waves of prakriti, or nature, which works under the Lord's direction. Maya Dyakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharacharam. Bhaktivinoda Thakur sings, Miche Mayayar Vase Yacha Beshe Kacha Hadudu Bubai. Why are you being carried away by the waves of the illusory energy in various phases of dreaming and wakefulness? These are all creations of Maya. Our only duty is to remember the supreme director of this illusory energy, Krishna. For us to do this, the Shastra advises us 
Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam. One should constantly chant the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The Supreme Lord is realized in three different phases as Brahma, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. But Bhagavan is the ultimate realization. One who realizes Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the most perfect Mahatma. Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Sa Mahatma Sudulabaha. In the human form of life, one should understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for then one will understand everything else. Yasmin Vigyate Sarvam Evam Vigyatam Bhavati. According to this Vedic injunction, simply by understanding Krishna, one understands Brahman, Paramatma, Prakriti, the illusory energy, the spiritual energy, and everything else. Everything will be revealed. Prakriti, the material nature, is working under the direction of the Supreme Lord, and we living entities are being carried away by various phases of Prakriti. For self-realization, one should always remember Krishna. As stated in the Padma Purana, Smarta Vyasa Tatam Vishnu, we should always remember Lord Vishnu. Smarta Vyo Na Jatuchit, we should never forget the Lord. This is the perfection of life. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Militanjena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurum Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavam Cha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Param Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Cha, He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapta Kanchana Gorange, Radhe Vrindavanishvari, Rishabhanu Suti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vyaevacha, Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. So I'd like to thank the assembled dev devotees for being here, giving me the opportunity to speak. <clears throat> I'd like to ask the blessings of all the devotees, especially those who are senior to me, many of you, <laughs> to help me to say something which is worthwhile and which is in line with Srila Prabhupada's teachings. So this verse here is a very important verse because it's, uh, it's pointing out a, a common misconception that people have that this life that we're living is the absolute re reality. So here Chichu, King Chichiketu has just had a, an awakening that uh, his dead son has come back to life and, uh, and questioned him, which, which father are you? Which mother and father are you? I've had many mothers and fathers in many different species of life and many universes. So what is my relationship with you? So this, of course, was a shock to King Chichiketu and uh, following Narada Muni's advice, he qualified himself to get the darshan of Lord Anantadev, who is now speaking to him in this verse and further elucidating the situation of the material world, which is like a dream. So how is, the material, how is material life like a dream? 
the main thing is that that it's not uh, it's not directly relevant to our real life just like a dream we dream so many things at night but when we wake up it's not relevant to what we have to do during the day it's just a lot of nonsense that we happen to think about while we weren't in control of our minds at night when we were sleeping so it's irrelevant and also it doesn't uh, help us so things that we do within a dream we may be you know earning a lot of money we may be achieving a lot of things but when we wake up we don't have that it's just like sometimes uh, when i'm doing a complete fast for a kadashi i go to sleep hungry so i don't know if this happens to anyone else but i almost always dream that i'm eating a big feast <laughs> maybe this is why devotees are not supposed to sleep on a kadashi but i i dream there's this huge buffet you know big plate i'm smelling the prashadam i'm like tasting everything you know it's delicious but I wake up in the morning and I'm still hungry. <laughs> so what was the use of all that eating? Right? So in the same way we're doing materialistic people are working so hard achieving so many at least they think that they're achieving so many things. But actually it's all just useless. It's not helping them in their ultimate progress, which is progressing closer to Krishna and on the journey back home back to Godhead. So Srila Prabhupada explains that this uh, dream of material life is based on two misconceptions. Those are I and mine. Yeah. So I, like is explained here in, in the verse, that I am this body, that I'm American, I'm Indian, I'm Russian, I'm Italian, that I'm black, that I'm white, that I'm old, that I'm young, that I'm male, that I'm female. These are all things that we are not actually. I mean, we are something, but this body that we're in now is no indication of that. So if we identify with the body, then any activities that we perform with that mentality are simply like the activities in a dream. They're illusory and they have no bearing, they have no usefulness in our real life, which is our spiritual life. So not only do we think that we're our bodies, this concept of false ego, the ahankara, that I am something which I'm not, but we consider that everything that's connected to this body is mine, right? My house, my car, my wife, my husband, my children, my job, every, all these things that are mine. So these are all, uh, of course, Krishna is the supreme proprietor. We come into this world empty-handed and we go out empty-handed. So what is the sense of that we, how can we possess anything? <clears throat> We're just like, <clears throat> sometimes, uh, Somebody has a nice motorcycle, so they park it by the roadside and car park, and then they go do what they need to do. So then, you know, some teenage boys come along, they're like, whoa, check that out. They go and look at the motorcycle, and they're standing close to it. They're getting closer and closer. Then they lean on it. You know, then one of them sits on it, and then he's imagining in his mind. You know, he's sitting there. The girls are walking by. Yeah. <laughs> it's mine, you know, and I'm cool. And doesn't it just make me so much more attractive that I've got this motorcycle? And, uh, you know, he's imagining the whole thing, driving down the road, the wind in his hair and all of this. <laughs> and then the real owner of the motorcycle comes along and says, clear off, kid. <laughs> so it's the same thing. In this materialistic life, we're thinking that something belongs to us, but the real owner is Krishna. And at the time of death, he comes and says, clear off. This is not yours. So... Not only are we thinking that our body is ourselves, that our things are ours, but we are also working very hard to maintain and acquire these things because we're convinced that they're mine and we're convinced that the more of these things we have, the better a person I, ha I have. The, the more status I have, the more people are going to like me, they're going to respect me because everybody's in the same concept that the more things you have, the better you are. The symptom of Kali Yuga, right? That a person's uh, status in society is based on his wealth. So people are working hard to gain material possessions and status. But Srimad Bhagavatam says that this is simply useless labor, right? Shrama eva hi kevalam. So this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 128 uh, is very emphatic. Shrama means useless labor. And then it has eva, which means certainly, he, which means indeed. <laughs> and then kevalam, which means only. It's only that, it's nothing more, and entirely, it's completely that, and nothing else. It's completely useless labor. There's no way that these activities in the dreamlike state of material life are helping you in any way. They're completely useless. So, that's perhaps the bad news for a materialistic person. But the good news is 
that all of the material problems that we have, all of our miseries that we're so bothered about and so upset about and we're busy ourselves trying to find solutions to, are also simply dream. They're, all, they're simply conditions in a dream. It's like if you have a bad dream, you know, some, say somebody's chasing you and they're trying to kill you. So you're panicking, you're in intense fear, you're running, you're looking for a place to hide, you're like huffing and puffing and traumatized, it's a life or death situation, and then you wake up and it's all over. It was just a dream. So in the same way, we're thinking that we have so many problems. There's family problems and financial problems and bodily problems and mental problems. So many problems we all have because after all it's Kali Yuga, you know, and everything's terrible. So, but all of these problems are actually like the problems in the dream. When we wake up to understand that we're actually a spirit soul, that we're actually, you know, uh, eternal and full of knowledge and full of bliss, then we'll realize that all of these problems that were disturbing us for lifetimes were actually just unnecessary. They had nothing to do with my real existence. That's what, uh, I mean, Srimad Bhagavatam says this in 176, that anarto pashamam sakshat, right, that the material miseries of the living entity are superfluous to him. Superflu superfluous means that they're excess, they're like excess baggage, they're unnecessary. So, uh, and he referred, the word that he uses to refer to these material miseries is anarta. So the word uh, arta means value. It's like we have dharma, arta, kama, moksha. Usually we use it in that sense, that arta means uh, economic development, gaining something of value in your life. So uh, the real meaning of arta is real value or spiritual value. That something is, you know, like a deposit in our spiritual bank account that's actually helping us to elevate and which is, you know, neha bikrama nashosti pratyavayo navidyate, that we gain that thing and there's no loss or diminution ever. So this is the real arta. But these material miseries and all these misidentifications that are the source of those miseries are anarta or useless. They have no value. It's the negation of arta, no value. So therefore our labor to achieve all of these things and our labor to solve our problems also because we have no problems really. Our only problem is that we're not realizing that our problems are not ours, <laughs> right? Our only problem is with that we're not waking up to the reality that I'm a spiritual soul, I have an eternal relationship with Krishna, I'm eternal, I'm full of bliss, I'm full of knowledge, and the more that I connect with that, the more I realize my ecstatic condition, then uh, that's our only problem, that we're not living in the reality. So this is basic knowledge in Krishna consciousness, that I'm not this body. And uh, in the in very, it's very introductory knowledge, although it takes us a long time to realize. In the very first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, we have Tejo Vari Mridam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Tri Sargo Misha, that uh, the material universe is temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of material nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. So here Bhagavatam is saying that this whole material manifestation is unreal. Because this is, this is kind of difficult to uh, understand because we're in the material world and things are very much real to us, right? How can you say that the table's not here? How can you say that the microphone's not here? It's doing a function. If, if it wasn't here, you wouldn't hear me, right? So how can we say that it's not real? I mean, we have to be careful with this because we're not the only ones that are saying that material life is an illusion. The Maya bodies are also saying it, right? Their whole thing of jagat mitya, that, material, uh, that this material world is false. And in fact, even the demons are saying it. Shilo, uh, Krishna explains this in Bhagavad Gita 16.8 that uh, asatyam apratishtam te jagat ahur anishvaram that uh, the, the demoniac say that this world is unreal, asatyam, that it has no foundation, apratishtam, with no controller, anishvaram. So the Mayavadis are saying it's not real. The demonic, the atheists are saying it's not real. And we're also saying it's not real. So how are we different from them? Now, this is very important to understand because we're very different from them. <laughs> so let's uh, get into this a little bit. So the, the Mayavadi conception, they believe that the material manifestation is unreal and that it's a complete illusion, right? Maya, body. <laughs> Maya means illusion. So the whole philosophy is based on this thing, that everything is just an illusion 
And uh, when we come to the stage of liberation, to our sadhana, to our study of Vedanta, then we're going to realize that uh, we're all God, right? That even the notion that there is a God beyond our existence, that is a God separate from us, is an illusion. Therefore, Krishna is an illusion. Because we're all God, how can you say that, you know, he's God? It's not that he is God. We're all God. He's just as much God as we are, and we're just as much God as he is. So it's all one. And so it's basically an atheistic point of view, which doesn't help them, obviously, because it's, uh, you know, uh, Chaitanya Chattamrita says, Maya Vadi Krishna Apara. They're, they're offending Krishna because uh, they're denying his existence as a Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that doesn't help him. So our philosophy of the illusory nature of the material world is very different from that. And then the demonic view that the world is unreal is based on the idea that it all came from nothing and therefore it means nothing. It has no purpose. Nobody's in control here. So that basically leads them to an existential crisis, right? Where this world came from nothing, it means nothing, there's no purpose, therefore I'm nothing, I have no purpose, my life has no value, and uh, nobody's in control here, therefore I can do anything I damn please. And then that leads them to what Krishna says in the next verse, 16.9, Ugra Karmanaha, that horrible uh, malicious activities which are, you know, destroying the world. So that's the state of most people. So the world is in such a bad state because we've got these demonic uh, conception that the world is an illusion and that it has no purpose, that I can do anything I want here and it's fine. <clears throat> so the Vaishnava philosophy is, of course, very different. Uh, one thing is that the other two philosophies don't elevate us in any way. They just increase our bondage. They just increase our illusion and our entrapment into the dreaming condition of life. But the Vaishnava understanding is that the material manifestation is not false, but it's temporary. That the theory of illusion applies only when the living entity identifies himself with the body. And that's what Anantadeva is talking about here. So, and any progress that we make on the material platform is also temporary. So in Vaishnava philosophy, when they, we, we talk about reality, we're talking about sat, right? It means truth, truth, or reality. It also means eternal. So the two are intrinsically related, they're inseparable, that reality is eternal, is eternal reality. It's not some temporary ephemeral manifestation that comes and goes. We're not interested in that. We're interested in eternal truth that lasts forever, that's permanent. So this is the Vaishnava philosophy. And it's very different from the demand that they say that there's no source, right? It all came from nothing. But of course, we say that there is a source, that this material world is, comes from Krishna. It's the product of his glancing over the material energy. And the very material energy is his energy. It's his apara prakriti, it's the material inferior energy. Uh, and it has a purpose. The purpose of this material world is to reform the fallen conditioned souls, to correct our mentality that I can enjoy myself separately from Krishna, or to correct the mentality that I am God, that I'm the master, that I'm the enjoyer. And it has a controller, as Srila Prabhupada says in his purport, that maya dyakshena prakriti suyate sa characharam. That this material nature is one of my energies and is working under my direction. Right? Uh, so this is, it is maya, as long as we identify with the body, maya is there. But it's Krishna's maya. So that's reassuring that it's Krishna's maya and Krishna is controlling this maya and Krishna is also giving us a process by which we can overcome it, right? He says that in Bhagavad Gita 7.14, Daiviye Shigunamai, Mama Maya Duratyaya, that Mama Maya, my Maya is Duratyaya, it's very difficult to overcome. But, Mam Eviye Prapadyante, those who have surrendered unto me, Maya Etam Tarantite, can easily cross beyond it, can easily wake up from the dreaming condition and understand who we really are. So, uh, this knowledge is the key to waking up to the reality. And in order for us to come to this point of surrendering to Krishna, of course, we have to remember him. Therefore, in this first, Srila Prabhupada is emphasizing uh, 
remembrance of Krishna and chanting Hare Krishna as a means of remembering Krishna. And Lord Anantadev says, Tat Dristaram Param Smaret. So the word Smaret means always remember. So we should always remember the original, what's he say here? Always remember the original creator of these conditions, the Supreme Lord, who is unaffected by them. So I, I thought I'd like to go a little deeper into this idea of remembering uh, Krishna, because uh, as Srila Prabhupada says in the purport, he quotes this uh, reference from the uh, Padma Purana, Smartavya Satatam Vishnu, uh, Vishmartavyo Najatuchit, that always remember Krishna and never forget him, that this is the one prime uh, regulative principle, that all other uh, regulative principles, including the four regular principles and the 64 un angas of or limbs of devotional service given in the uh, nectar of devotion are all servants to this one regulative principle to always remember Krishna and never forget him. And by remembering Krishna, each time that we remember Krishna, even if it's only a glimmer of a remembrance of Krishna, that elevates us and it brings us more and more out of the dream. It brings us more closer to our actual uh, understanding of who we are, our eternal constitutional position. So in the nectar of instruction, Text 8, Rupa Goswami uh, speaks at length, uh, he em emphasizes this point. He says, Tanama Rupa Charatari Sukirtananu Smritiyo Kramena Rasanam Anasin Yojya. That the essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternally, eternal pastimes therefore gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. So the essence of all advice is to remember Krishna. Always remember Krishna and never forget him. And then towards the end of this purport, Srila Prabhupada explains how by remembering Krishna, that there are different stages of remembering Krishna. And this is based on what Rupa Goswami is saying here. Smrit yo kramena rasana manasini yoga, that kramena, the steps, there's step, step, it's a step by step process that a remembrance leads to more remembrance, leads to more remembrance, leads to constant remembrance, leads to uh, complete existence in reality. So the steps are given here uh, by Srila Prabhupada in the purport that the first stage, he says, uh, in the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Kata. This is called Shravana Dasha, or the stage of hearing. So it starts with hearing. Uh, that by hearing, Krishna, by hearing Krishna's name, we think of Krishna. Of course, that always, doesn't always happen, <laughs> but that's the idea. <laughs> that by hearing Krishna's name, we think of Krishna. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam class, we think of Krishna. By hearing Krishna's... So hearing... Uh, See, generally we're going through life and we're not thinking of Krishna. But if someone will say something about Krishna, then we'll think, oh yeah, Krishna, right? <laughs> it's kind of like that sometimes. And then, uh, and then after that we'll you know, think of Krishna for a little while and then we get into other things we completely forget about Krishna. And then we hear the, the Harinam in the distance, oh yeah, Krishna. We think of Krishna a little while. And then we come to the Bhagavatam class and, oh Krishna. So we're thinking of Krishna, but this is, it's prompted by hearing. We need help from an external source. So this is called the stage of recollection. This is Shravana Dasha, or the stage of recollection. So then comes uh, Varana Dasha, the next stage. Varana means uh, acceptance. So in the beginning stage, we're hearing about Krishna, and we're kind of like, oh yeah, Krishna's interesting. Uh, the Krishna conscious movement is nice. But then it comes to a more advanced stage where when we hear about Krishna, we get... Uh, we understand, for example, that, like, say we're hearing that the pastime of Krishna is lifting Govardhan Hill. So then it's not just, oh yeah, Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill. Nice. But it's, Krishna is so amazing. He's this wonderful personality. He lifted Govardhan Hill. He gives shelter to all the Vrajabhasis. He's my shelter. He's, this, he's the only shelter for me. Oh Lord Krishna, give me shelter at your lotus feet. Right? So it's when we, we start really uh, taking this, re this Krishna into our life, we accept Krishna. It's like the Christians say, you have to accept Jesus into your heart. So it's the same thing. <laughs> you have to accept Krishna into our heart. This is the stage of Varanadasha, or acceptance. Then that brings us to the next stage, which is Smaranavashta. So the other ones were prompted by hearing. 
But Smarana Vashta is that even without hearing about Krishna, you automatically think of Krishna. Because you're attracted to Krishna, because you've, you've, Krishna is there in your heart. It's like a, Krishna is a prominent part of your life. So that uh, you want to think of Krishna and you make yourself think of Krishna, even without someone reminding you. So then in this case, you know, you're sitting on a bus or something and you're like thinking of Krishna. And you're getting absorbed in that. And it's kind of like, you know, you, you remember a pastime, say you remember Damodar Leela or something in the month of Kartik. So it's kind of like this movie of, you know, Damodar Leela is playing in your mind. So that's, you're seeing that pastime in your mind's eye, although you're still external to it. You're like watching it as an outside observer in your mind. Uh, and that it's interrupted, right? Something happens and then, you know, there's some commotion on the bus. You become absorbed in what's going on here and, and it leaves you. So that's smarana vashta. But then that leads you to a higher stage of remembrance where not only are you, you're not just externally seeing it like watching a movie, but you're getting drawn into it, right? Like you, you're feeling like you're identifying with this reality that this is, this is something which is intrinsically related to me somehow, right? Uh, and you, you may even become attracted to a particular personality that you see within that Leela. So this, uh, this is a absorption. And then this absorb, but still it's interrupted. And then comes to the stage of Anu Smriti. So Anu means going on, right? On and on. And Smriti means remembrance. So this is when the, 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 in, the remembrance of Krishna is always there. Sometimes it's in the forefront of your mind. Sometimes it's in the background of your mind. But knowledge of Krishna or remembrance of Krishna is like a continuum. It's continually pervading your consciousness at some level. So this is Anusmriti. And at this stage you, you not only see little glimpses of a past, little bits of a pastime here and bits of something there, but the, it's, it's opening up. It, it's not just a scene, but it's more like a, a whole reality that exists apart from the reality which you are a part of now. That's Anusmriti. And then that stage very quickly leads to the highest stage of remembrance of Krishna, which is Samadhi. So Samadhi is uh, complete absorption. That you're seeing that pastime, not only the pastime, you're seeing the whole spiritual world. You're identifying more with that reality than, than the material world around you. And uh, you feel like that's where your life is. That you exist there. And you become so absorbed in it that you, you're not aware of your external situation here in the material world. That's Samadhi. So that's, uh, of course, uh, maybe something that we can look forward to in the future. But uh, Prabhupada said, work now, Samadhi later. <laughs> so don't try artificially to get into that mode. That's not desirable and that will lead you to Sahajiism. So Prabhupada emphasized this, that work now, Samadhi later. By engaging our senses in the process of devotional service and pushing on Srila Prabhupada's mission to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world, then uh, these things will gradually be revealed to us, as Srila Prabhupada was explaining in the purport. The Krishna consciousness is a process of gra gradual revelation, but we should know what the goal is and we should aspire for that goal and be conscious of that goal in our activities. So it's just like the verse that I was talking about before, Anartana. Anartano pasanam sakshat, that the material miseries of the living entity are super, which are superfluous to him can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this. This is a lokasya janato, but lokasya janato. So lokasya, the mass of people, ajanato. It's like ami janina. <laughs> ajanato. The mass of people do not know this. And therefore, Vidvams, the greatly learned sage, Srila Vyasadeva, has compiled this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is in relation to the Supreme Absolute Truth. Chakre Sattvata Samitam. So this Chakre, the word Chakre means compiled. So this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, this compilation, is our, you can also think of another way, is also our Chakra, right? That this is our weapon, or this is a... <clears throat> What we use to, it's our, our, our instrument for preaching. Because uh, the mass of people do not know this. And 5,000 years ago, 5,000 years has passed since Srila Vyasadeva compiled this Bhagavad Purana and still the mass of people do not know this. 
So there's so much work to be done, and we need to uh, actively engage our, tax our brains, and you know, use our bodies as instruments. And in this way, we're actually, even without you know, knowing our internal constitutional position in Krishna's pastimes, we're acting within the reality, right? That that my, I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. Krishna wants the world to know about him. Lord Chaitanya has ordered everyone, become a guru, preach this message in every town and village. So the extent to which we participate in that mission, to that extent we're acting in reality. And that's how all of these things become revealed to us. Uh, because people are suffering so much. The material miseries are superfluous, but they're so absorbed in them. They're in the dense, they're in the dream, in the dense darkness of it. And the light is coming from this knowledge, right? the jnana dipena, the, the, the lamp of knowledge. The, there's the verse, the, the, the beautiful, this Bhagavatam, this Bhagavat Purana is as brilliant as the sun. What is it? Krishna Swadharma Pukate. Uh, dharma jnana adibi saha. Then, kalo nashta drisham esha puranarko danuditaha. That this Bhagavad Purana is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Sri Krishna to his abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. People who have lost their vision. So people have lost their vision because they're sleeping in this dreamlike reality of material existence, that I am this body, that these things are mine, that my work is going to benefit me in the material world. So people have lost their vision of who they actually are, the spiritual reality, who have lost that vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali shall get light from this Bhagavat Purana. So we have this great treasure, this great gift of Srimad Bhagavatam, and it's our duty. We've all been ordered to distribute this knowledge, to illuminate the world with this knowledge, because this is Krishna's mission, this is Lord Chaitanya's mission, Srila Prabhupada's mission. So we have to make this our mission. And now uh, the December marathon is coming soon. Srila Prabhupada's book distribution key, Jai. <laughs> so we should all try to find some way, even if we can't do it during the month of December, but whenever we can do it, to try to. Uh, give knowledge to the people so that they can understand that all their problems are unnecessary and that actually our nature is to be eternally happy and we can achieve that in Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, comments on these points? Wait for the mic soon, then everybody can hear. Thank you so much for this wonderful class, Mataji. You pointed out some basic things, but you went so deep, and the way you explained it, it really impressed me. And then the, uh, the levels of remembrance, yes, it touched my heart because I knew this, but what you told me, it's, it's really wonderful. It was very deep. And your last, uh, uh, you're, you're asking us to distribute the, the Prabhupada's view, the mission, to bring it further. It's so amazing. It's wonderful. It's really touched my heart. Thank you so much for this knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Jantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees.